let's look into why. Joining us now, politics reporter for Cleveland.com, Andrew Tobias, also with us, investigative reporter for The New York Times, David Farenthold. He's been reporting on J.D. Vance's introduction to Ohio politics. It's good to have you both with us. And um, Andrew, I'll start with you. Um, I'm curious, just full context on how the debate went last night and what is the draw to J.D. Vance in Ohio? Yeah, I think actually the issue with J.D. Vance is that I don't think voters know a lot about him. A lot of the spending that's happened in this race has been on the Republican side attacking Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan had the ads to himself in the summer because of J.D. Vance's fundraising issues. And so I think actually going on stage last night, I'm not sure if it's, you know, millions of Ohioans are watching that live or anything like that, but it might be their first opportunity to actually see J.D. Vance talk. And so the context then is that he has the opportunity to try to work to define himself this late in the race. And I thought it was interesting that you kind of saw him skate past some of his more hardline positions. But to me, like I said, I think it, it shows that he's still just kind of defining himself on the fly in the eyes of a lot of voters, which is a challenging thing to pull off. So, Andrew, uh, we were talking to Congressman Ryan a little bit earlier in the show, and he's raised a bunch of money on his own, but not getting outside support from the National Party. The National Party, a new piece by our colleagues at NBC News, saying effectively off the record, we just don't think he can win. We think that Ohio has gone red. We saw that we thought it was close for Joe Biden. He ended up losing by eight points. Do we expect to see more national support in what is right now, if you look at the polls anyway, a very tight race, more support for Tim Ryan? Yeah, I'd heard that Democrats might be looking at putting more money in this race, but nothing's come of that yet that I know of. So I'm not really sure what the thought process is there. But like I said, over the summer, Tim Ryan had the, uh, the airwaves to himself benefited him a lot. He was able to kind of try to, you know, set an early definition. You see ads of him like throwing a football around and kind of doing things that Ohioans like to do. Um, yeah. And but now the, the picture's kind of evened out on the Republican side and you don't really see like the Democrat equivalent to that kind of stepping up at this point. Andrew, uh, Ohioans also, especially uh, in, in your neck of the woods, so we say in the deep south, also like baseball. Can the Guardians do it? I'm optimistic. I mean, it's a tough lot matchup they've got against the Yankees coming up, but I think they uh, do actually have what it takes. So we'll see. Oh, but I, I thought right. that before, politics too. reporter for Cleveland.com, Andrew Tobias. Thank, Thank you, you so Andrew. much. So, David Farenthold, I won't ask you to weigh in on America's team, Cleveland Guardians, but if you could walk us through your latest reporting, which is J.D. Vance's introduction to Ohio, about how he came up with a nonprofit group, and it seems like some think it wasn't about helping people, but rather his own political future. Right. You got to go back to the moment of 2017. Vance is a best-selling author, he, but he lives in San Francisco. He's moving back to Ohio. He's trying to establish himself there, give himself a presence in a state where he hasn't lived for several years. So he starts this nonprofit called Our Ohio Renewal. Okay. A pretty big name. Uh, and he sets the goal of fighting opioids, joblessness, and uh, broken families all at once. And he says his goal is to help disadvantaged children achieve their dreams. Okay. That's a pretty big mission. Uh, but then within a year, Basically, he abandons it. He spends a year talking about things, talk, you know, describing its ambitions, and then in, in 2018, the year after he starts it, basically gives it up and moves on. And so I talked to people who worked for that group, and they said, look, we thought we were there to help Ohio. We believed in this mission. Now, in hindsight, we think we were just there to make it seem like J.D. Vance had a presence in Ohio and kind of give him his first foothold in Ohio politics. David, he's had this kind of weird transition, J.D. Vance, because he wrote Hillbilly Elegy. Every Democrat and liberal in the country kind of fell in love with him and thought, you know, that was the guy who was going to finally explain 2016 to them. And then he goes back from Silicon Valley, goes to Ohio. I mean, is, there, is there any sense that you get from your reporting that Ohioans are thinking that he's a transplant who's not even particularly going to stay in the state if he if he loses does he even stay in ohio is this all just about his political career being there that's certainly the case that the Democrats like Congressman Ryan are making. You know, it's so interesting. I watched a lot of video of J.D. Vance from back then, from 2017. And I mean, obviously, this is a guy who put the word elegy in the title of his book. So he wasn't, you know, he wasn't aiming at the working class. He was aiming at, at liberals on the coast. Uh, but he, even then, you see a guy who is sort of saying, well, I'm not really a Republican. I'm not really a Democrat. I want to, you know, both sides are wrong. I just want to find solutions on my own. And it's amazing to watch that transition to now. Yeah. 
Van says, you know, Donald Trump has all the solutions. You know, the solutions are not complicated. It's, you know, he has this really sort of hard right, very, you know, doctrinaire view of the world that's so different than the man he was a few years ago. So, you know, he seems to have just adopted this persona that with the aim of getting into this race. And what you saw, what I saw in my reporting was even in that year when his charity was semi-active, even when he said, look, I'm, I'm not here to run for office. I'm here to change Ohio through this charity. You saw him taking the first steps into politics. So it seems like mm -hmm. that has been his goal and his ambition from very early on after he arrived in Ohio. All right, investigative reporter with The New York Times, David Perenthold, thank you very much for being on this morning with your reporting.